Many people have heard about the immense power of the mirror principle and how radically this can transform your life when applied properly. And this includes transforming your life in your finances, your health, your relationships, and so on. For me personally, when I used the mirror principle in my own life, all of these areas improved dramatically for me. And this includes having consistent $10,000 months doing what I love to do. So not only can the mirror principle help you to earn more money, it can help you to earn more money in a way that's actually fulfilling. And again, although we are focusing on the financial side of things here, this can be used for any area of your life. This can also be used if you already have been getting 10,000 or more a month consistently or six figures a year to go to the next level from there. So say to 100K months or seven figure years and even beyond that. There really is no limit to how far you can utilize this principle because it's the same at every level. Now, if you are unaware of what the mirror principle is, I will go over it briefly in this video. Essentially, the mirror principle states that the outer world follows the inner world, that what you have been cultivating and growing and focusing on in what's called your inner world, we could even call it an inner garden, will be mirrored or reflected in your physical life. I'll dive a little bit deeper later in this video on how this all works, so don't worry. Now, this will not only be a video on the philosophy of how this principle works, but also give you practical steps you can use so that you can actually put it into action. Because at the end of the day, what use is the philosophy if you can't use it in a practical way that gets you results if you apply them. So first, we'll cover a little bit more on what is the mirror principle, how the mirror principle works, and then we'll take it from there so you have some tools you can walk away with from this video that can help get you started. So like I just said, the mirror principle at its basic level says that the outer world follows the inner world. But what does that actually mean? Well, you actually have more than one side of you. Yes, you have a physical side of you. You operate and function in the physical world using your five senses. This is absolutely a part of you and you probably already know this and don't need to buy into this idea. However, you also have a mental and spiritual side of you known as your mental and spiritual planes of existence. And it is these two planes of existence that make up what we call the inner world. Now, why is it that these two sides of you that make up what we call the inner world are followed by the outer world? Why is it the outer follows the inner? And this is where the mirror principle starts to come into play. So the first thing to recognize is that all three planes of existence, so the physical, the mental, and the spiritual, are all actually made up of the same thing. They're not as separate as they first appear to be. The actual difference between the three is not that they are different kinds of things, but operating at different rates of vibration or different speeds of vibration. You can think of it like a pole. And at the top of the pole, you have energy or spirit, which is the highest rate of vibration, so it's at the top of this pole. The mental side would also be closer to the top than it would the bottom. But at the very bottom, you have the physical, and this is the slowest and most dense rate of vibration. So everything in all of these planes of existence are actually made up of energy, but manifest and show up differently based on the rate of vibration, where it is on this pole. Now, between the grossest form of physical matter and the highest level of pure energy and spirit, there are millions, actually infinite, variations of how this shows up. However, because energy or spirit is the fastest rate of vibration, it pretty much shows up instantaneously. Where matter, because it is so slow and dense, takes more time to come about. If you were, for example, to think of a loved one, you could not only picture them in your mind right away, you could, if you were trained, feel love or joy or whatever it is you feel when you think of them almost immediately. There is no real lag time between you being able to access that. You can access love, joy, peace, uh, guilt, shame, all the other emotions too, practically instantaneously. However, these things will not show up in the physical right away. That takes time. What does this have to do with our outer world following the inner and why this is actually a law of this reality we live in? Well, when you keep your inner world tuned into a specific thing long enough, you allow the slower energy of the physical to catch up, so to speak, and it will again be something of its like kind. So essentially, the more you focus on something in the mental and spiritual, it starts to become reproduced in the physical, but it takes more time of you focusing on it in the spiritual and mental for it to come about in the physical, meaning you have to keep your focus there and tuned into whatever it is you want in the physical in its spiritual and mental 
um, equivalents. This is why, for example, if you entertain energies like fear in your life, you'll see that reflected in your physical life. But if you then decide to change it and feel more love, for example, you won't right away see too many changes in your physical. But if you did this for long enough, you would see the change in your physical life. There is just a delay because it is slower, denser, and the old energy of fear that was already in your life that had been built up also has to be released. So just keep this in mind. It is a law of the universe. The outer world follows the inner world. You now know what the outer world is and what we're talking about when we say the inner. Now, one other thing I want to mention because it's going to drive this home and make many more things connect for you and click is how our reality actually operates. Because if you have three planes of existence, wouldn't it be the case that your physical life or what you do physically isn't the only thing that impacts your life? You bet. In fact, you'll be shocked to learn how little influence moving just from the physical world has. And this is because our reality is actually made up of 99.999999% empty space and energy, and only about 0.000001% physical matter reality. This is also why the outer world follows the inner world. It is that tiny percentage coming out of that much larger percentage. It is the subset, which is the physical world, of a superset, which is the spirit and mental world. This is why you have to focus more on the higher end of the pole where energy and spirit preside along with the mental. You will then start to get much better results in your physical as you do this, because then you are tapping into the 99.9 .9 plus percent that influences this tiny percentage that's known as the physical world. So what you ultimately do on these two planes of existence will go a massive long way to determining what shows up in your physical life. And this includes the people, the opportunities, the events, and so much more. I'm going to leave it there as far as explaining how the mirror principle works, as far as the philosophy is concerned, because I've dedicated whole other videos to explaining it in even deeper ways. Now I wanna focus on the practical things you can do in order to make this something that actually brings you results financially, and also you can use in other areas of your life. So since we are specifically talking about finances in this video, we need to have what's called a North Star, or simply something to aim at. You need to know where you want to go with all this financially. What are your goals in this realm of finances? Now, I've given the formula to how to make this work that I got from a mentor of mine about how you create a dream, a DCA, objectives, and so on. And this is one of the most effective ways I've seen as it can act so quickly if you're really focused and have this dialed in. When I started using it, I was making a few thousand a month and within six months was making consistent 10K months and even some 20K months. Now, if you really want to dive deep into what this formula is, then you can check out that other video, which I will link in the description. And this is one of my favorite videos on the channel because it will activate the mirror principle like no other. And if you combine that with the rest of what we'll cover here and stick with it, you are going to be amazed at what you can do in a relatively short amount of time. So now assuming that you have an aim or you're gonna to go to that video after so you can have one, let's go over what you need to do. First, you're going to need to tune in to this dream, this DCA, this aim on a daily basis. Yep, every single day. Now, why is that? Because you'll be wiring your inner world to align to this North Star. You'll emotionalize it, be thinking about it more and more, which will also compel you to act in ways you wouldn't have been able to imagine in the past. This gets you into what we call alignment with all three planes of existence, and with clarity, which comes from your North Star, and alignment, you get speed. The emotionalization of excitement, joy, fulfillment, and so on you feel when going over this activates this on the spiritual plane. You thinking about it activates it on the mental. And with those two now engaged in a new vision, physical actions will be made apparent. Same with opportunities and so much more. So in a nutshell, when you have this vision, this aim, and you emotionalize it, you have all three planes of existence activated and in alignment and in coherence. And so instead of just trying to do things on the physical plane like most people do and force your way using that 0.00001% of what makes up this reality, now you have all of reality co-creating with you. You have that 99.9 plus percent on your side moving you towards your dream. Now, it is essential that you stick with doing this. Many people get distracted, which muddies up the inner world, which of course leads to spotty results in the outer world, which of course is following the inner world. The more you can stay focused on that aim, the more you think about it, the more you emotionalize it from a good place, 
the better. If you can focus on feeling good now in general as well, then you will essentially be pouring gasoline on the fire. I talk more about this in the video I linked down below, so I won't go over it again here, but feeling great now is essential because what would that be doing for your inner world when you're feeling good genuinely all the time? So now I want to tell you about another law that I learned from a mentor that changed the game for me, especially when it came to finances. And again, this is another one you can use beyond just finances. But especially for finances, this was a game changer, and it's called Pearson's Law. It simply states that what you measure improves, but what you measure and record improves dramatically. So if that's the case, do you think it would be worth measuring your finances? Yes. Again, like I said, this can be applied to many things. For example, weight loss or gain, sub count on YouTube or other places, tracking nutrition, client calls you've had for your business, and anything else you can essentially quantify. But with money, I recommend an incredible tool given by the same mentor of mine called a money map. This is simply where you track the money you have coming in each month and the money you earn each month. Doing this activates Pearson's law in a very powerful way. And if you combine this with your new understanding of the mirror principle and the dream formula that's linked in the video down below, you're going to get results, absolutely 100% get results if you stick with it. And I know for a lot of people that can be the hardest part sticking with it, but if you do, I promise you're gonna see progress. So with the money map, you're essentially going to track a few key things. Now, the important thing here is you are not doing your finances or expenses or anything like that. You are simply tracking the money that's coming in. That's it. So first thing you're gonna do is the money you know. So before the month starts, you're just gonna fill out all the money that is already due to come into you this month on the day it's meant to come in. So for example, if I know a client is paying me on the 12th of next month, and it's the beginning of the month and I'm doing my money map, I would put this amount of money, whatever it is, for that date is going to come in. I already know that's on the way, it just has to wait until that day comes. So then add up all the money you already know is coming in for that month, and then you have the money you know. Now you can also set a goal for the current month on what you would like to reach, although you don't have to. I personally don't, but will mention that my DCA is a financial one, so that takes care of that for me. So for example, if you wanna set a certain goal that for you not only lights you up, but your mind will buy into, you can absolutely do that. Now, as the month goes by, you will update daily or at least weekly the money map, filling in the additional money you earn throughout the month. So let's say you sign up a new client, if that's something that's a part of what you do, on the fifth, as you're going through the course or going through the money map, you would then track that. Let's say some money randomly comes in from somewhere else, you would track that too. So essentially any money that now comes in that you didn't already know was coming in, you are going to make sure you track and measure and put on the money map. Now, on days when nothing comes in, you are still going to write a number and it's going to be a zero, a dollar sign and zero or whatever sign you use. And this is twofold, it's to keep you making sure you're tracking and getting into the habit. But also when you see that on there, it may inspire you to do certain things and to get your you know, ass in gear a little bit. Let's say if you've been neglecting or procrastinating on things you know you wanna do. It's putting it in your awareness and showing you some of the blind spots you might need to see. So of course, at the end of the month, you're gonna add up everything and now you have your grand total of money you brought in this month. Now just by doing this you will be activating Pearson's Law and you may be surprised with what ideas start to come through for you as you do this and maybe money coming through from different areas that you may have not expected. Now when you set up the next month after you've done your first you'll add on that page what you made last month along with everything else that I mentioned above. So everything else is going to be the same except you'll put last month I made this and it just gives you a target to try and transcend or move beyond for this next month. Now when you set this up for each month, I recommend on the first of each month you set this up so you're not doing it a week in or you know a few weeks in. Now if you're watching this and want to start right away, then absolutely start right now. Don't wait. But as you keep doing this practice, that would be my recommendation a day before or on the actual first day of the month to calculate your last month, the month that just ended, and start setting up your next month. I can't emphasize the importance enough of how crucial a tool this can be for you. Many people may start this one, but then they stop after a few weeks. If you keep going with this, you are continuing to activate a law known as Pearson's Law. And what do we know about laws? They work. 
every single time, no matter what. Meaning if you're activating this just by tracking this, measuring this, um, doing this practice, you are almost guaranteeing that you're going to start seeing an upturn in your finances at some point. Again, these principles work for those who actually work them. So there's one last thing I want to do to tie all of this together that's going to be something that is either misinterpreted or is counterintuitive to what a lot of people are told. Now at this point, you are more aware of what the mirror principle is, or you can go watch one of my other videos that gives you more explanation, but you have a working understanding, hopefully at this point, that the outer world follows the inner. You have a formula in the video I've linked down below that you could use to activate the mirror principle powerfully, especially for your finances, or you will be aware of what that is once you watch that video I mentioned. And you now have Pearson's Law and the Money Map practice this, which can really skyrocket this for your finances. But I need to mention something else incredibly crucial here. When it comes to making money, setting goals, and so on, many people set themselves up to fail by going too big. Now, does that sound contrary to the advice you probably hear in the self-help space? Well, good, because it is. People like to set these massive goals that are very overwhelming to them because they feel that it's gonna save them time and that they might as well cut right to that so they don't waste their time getting those other little progressive wins along the way. Like I'm making 5,000 a month, why don't I just aim for 50K instead of trying to double it to 10K? That sounds a lot better. The problem is this won't actually help you get to 50K unless something's in place. Most likely it is going to keep you in place at the 5K instead of progressing. Why? Because they don't really believe that they can do it. For example, someone making 50K a year is most likely not going to believe that they can make 150K this year. Now, a rare individual might, I'm not saying it's impossible, and you certainly can find someone who would be able to do that. But if you can't believe it yet, don't set it. You should have 100% confidence that you can hit whatever it is that you set in this financial goal um, section, right? If someone believes, if they have 50K and they truly believe with no doubt that they can hit 150, then they actually will but most people don't. Now, why this happens is because doubt is one of the most poisonous energies when it comes to manifesting. You'll be activating the mirror principle from the inner world from a place of doubt, which then will have to be reflected in your physical. And so the mirror principle is always operating, but now you're doubting yourself and that inner world's lowering energetically, lowering to more base thoughts and lower um, mental images, and that's now being reproduced in the physical. However, if you choose something you know you can hit, and you hit it, what happens? You gain confidence. Then you'll have confidence enough to choose something bigger, then something bigger, and so on. And trust me, this can add up incredibly quickly. That same person who wanted to go from 50K to 150, probably setting that 150 goal would never get there because they would doubt themselves the whole way through and probably give up. But let's say they chose something they believe they could do. Let's say I'm going to set a goal that in the next six to 12 months, I'm going to earn 65K. Let's say it was that in the year. Let's say it was something like that. And let's say they knew that they could hit that or even hit that before the time frame is up. Now let's say they hit that in seven months. Well, how do you think their confidence is going to be when they set their next goal? Now suddenly they're like, you know what? I think in the next six to 12 months, I can hit what feels really good. What do I know I can hit? I, I know I can hit 90K. Okay, they go for 90K and let's say they hit that even shorter, five months. Okay, 90K. You know what, from this 90K place, I really do think I can hit 150. Now I have the way I've discovered things as I've been doing this that are helping me and I think I can replicate. Actually, I know I can, now I'll do the 150. Maybe they need to go to 120, maybe continue to tiptoe from there, but it can happen very quickly. And with these wins under your belt, you're building up a foundation that raises you up, raises your confidence to the point where getting to that 150K will be a lot quicker than you think. Now, this is gonna be explained in even more detail in the formula video, again, that I left you down below. Um, so you can go check that out and this will be reiterated with some more examples, but just remember that confidence is key. Now, if you're looking to get real results in the fastest way possible, you can check out our reality creation program that will help you not only dive into these topics at a much deeper level, but keep you on track with all of it, help you back on course if you ever go off or veer off course and so on so that you get absolutely amazing results. Because a big issue for a lot of people is just sticking in there, is accountability. They have no one guiding them as they go on this journey and no one who can show them when to turn right, when to turn left and so on. 
You can watch our free case study that's linked down below um, if you want to check that out and see if it's a good fit for you. You can also see some of the testimonials and amazing results that our clients have been getting through going through the program. Now there is one other piece to the puzzle that I wasn't able to mention in this video just due to the length of this video already, and that is how to embrace the inevitable chaos or kind of problems that arise when you actually start moving towards evolution and moving towards the next level for yourself. You ever felt that chaos comes up? Well, a lot of people run away from it, and that's not the solution. And so in this video, I'm gonna be going over how to embrace the bends, embrace the chaos, so you come out the other side at a whole new level in your life. If you combine what you learned in this video, the formula video, and this video together, you're gonna have such an amazing recipe for success.